is good yo it's your boy top back here with another video in this video today we are going to be going over the top 10 budget players in nba 2k 21 my team and this but this budget list it's a lot okay so it's not just in order of how good they are it's an out order of how good they are for their specific price so my number one might go for a thousand mt or it might go for 10 15 000 mt it just all depends on how good they are for their specific price so it's like the best bang for your buck you know you go to, i'm not gonna compare it to like shopping but you know you got these chicken nuggets these chicken nuggets how good is it for its price what forget what i said but if you are new to my channel and love my team content please smash that subscribe button as we are on the road towards 50 000 subscribers we're gonna have 11 players on the list because i couldn't when it got down to it i couldn't decide between two guys so number 11 slash 10 is amethyst lonzo ball now the reason lonzo is on my list is because i actually used him on my no money spent account and i had pretty good success with this player now the problem with lonzo is his release is very very bad but outside of his release he does everything else good his speed's good good defensively driving dunks good three pointers and 84 now the big thing that i see with this lonzo ball is obviously clamp showtime he's got it all but no range extender comes on the card. And again, he doesn't have a super high three ball. His release isn't great. Now, if you can find a Lonzo badged up, go ahead and do your thing. But an unbadged Lonzo, he's just kind of passed up by some of the newer point guards we got. But at the start of my No Money Spent series, he was, you know, my point guard for at least a little bit. So I couldn't leave him off the list. But another guy I couldn't completely leave off the list is new Ruby Ursan Ilyasova. How am I supposed to leave this guy off the list? Looking at the card here again, 5K, 6'9", 235 pounds, 93 three ball with a Pierce type release, which is just absolute butter. Uh, now he does step in from the corners occasionally, but I would say on my no money spend account on current gen, the one three I did take from the corner, he actually did shoot a three. So that was a good sign insane rebounder speed lateral quickness isn't that great but rebounding is insane great shooter and you, you you know what you're gonna get out of the card for literally 5,000 mt you're gonna get an absolutely knockdown shooter that is serviceable enough on the defensive end guys he comes with that silver range extender i do believe all other gold shooting badges now he does have steady shooter next gen that does turn to blinders so if you're on next gen i'd be a little bit higher on urson Ilias over plus the fact that you probably don't have to worry about him stepping in from the corners but those are my guys tied at number 10 with Ursan Ilyasova and Amethyst Lonzo Ball. Coming in at number 9 for me is a guy that I've always been extremely high on. Now, I'm high on the card. Do I compare him to a Giannis? I don't think he's quite to that level, okay? Do I think he can be when he gets a new card? Absolutely. But another card that goes for right around that 5k price range again right here you see in a, a, a card for 5200 okay looking at this Bates Jonathan Isaac 611 210 pounds 84 three ball 85 driving dunk decent enough ball handle and on the defensive end he's just he's like a Siakam I'm gonna compare him to Siakam all the time because that's basically what he is he's so so versatile can play the three can play the four uh the 83 speed is something that i personally would like to see a little bit higher as well as this three ball is only an 84 but looking at the badges 16 golds does come with clamps the problem with this card is shooting i mean he does have catch and shoot corner specialist but i can't say i green consistently with jonathan isaac on current gen i just personally don't some of you guys might but for me right now i just don't when we get a better jonathan isaac maybe a diamond pink diamond he might be one of the top cards in the game but this ruby for 5k i mean you can find better power forwards but it's rare jonathan isaac still is on my no money spent squad to this day and is number nine on my top 10 budget baller list now i know a lot of guys have pascal siakam actually behind jonathan isaac but mine are just flipped a little bit and part of the reason they're flipped is because pasco siakam is that little bit cheaper okay he goes for about 4,000 mt so just that little bit cheaper and i do think siakam's just a little bit more complete 6-9 does have a little bit of a boosted three ball at green more consistently with him 80 driving dunk defensively they're basically identical now the one thing i will say uh jonathan isaac is going to be a little bit better of a rebounder but outside of that defensively it's hard to separate the two outside of the fact that jonathan isaac is that little bit taller so basically what siakam is going to give you is a little bit better shooter more complete badge wise whereas jonathan isaac is that little bit taller more lengthy the thing I like about Siakam, Hall of Fame post with lockdown, gold catch and shoot, gold clamps, 
and then you just look through and through gold quick first step green machine hot zone hunter he just has that little bit extra compared to jonathan isaac in the badge department and that's why i have him one step higher do i think he's that much better than jonathan isaac i don't if they were the exact same price i would still take pasco siakam combine that with the fact that pasco siakam is cheaper a little bit more complete give me siakam 10 times out of 10 over jonathan isaac coming in at number eight on my top 10 budget player list Coming in at number seven, we are going to the center position in Amethyst Serge Ibaka. Now, the one thing I will say about Serge is he's been around for a while, okay? Serge has been out for a very long time. But again, you can pick up a Serge for 5400 which is an absolutely ridiculous price for one of the best budget centers in the game. Now, looking at Serge here, 6'10", 245 pounds, 85 three ball, 90 driving dunk. And on the interior, as far as defensively, he is, he is lights out. 76 speed, 70 lateral quickness. I know a lot of people are going to say that's barely better than Ursan Ilyasova. You're right, but does Ursan got a 97 block, 90 interior defense and move the way Serge does? He just, he's not well, he's not as good as Serge on the defensive end. Whereas Ursan does give you that little more on the offensive end. Tendency wise, Serge Ibaka is incredible on the offensive end and defensive tendencies are absolutely ridiculous as well. Does come with Hall of Fame rims, some, some other 12 gold badges, including catch and shoot corner specialist, as well as gold intimidator, which is a super important badge. I think Serge is such a complete budget center in the game. Coming in at number seven on my top 10 budget player list. Coming in at number six might be a surprise to a lot of you guys in Ruby Lou Dort. Now, the reason I say he's going to be a surprise for a lot of you guys is because most people, when they make their budget list, don't think of this guy. But I'm telling you, one of the most underrated and overlooked cards in the game. And guys, the craziest thing about this card is look at the price that you can get him for. You can go out and get a Lou Dort right now if you wanted to for 1,000 MT. And for 1,000 MT, I get it. He's only 6'3". That's a big downside to the card. But I still run him on my no money spent account. 87 three ball. Consistent consistent green, I would say. He doesn't have the smoothest release, but it's pretty consistent. 85 driving dunk. 86 ball handle. 92 steel. 94 perimeter defense. 89 speed as well as that 94 lateral quickness. Where else are you seeing that for 1,000 MT? I'll give you I'll give you a, a pretty quick answer. You're not seeing that with these defensive tendos. Then you go to the badges. Catch and shoot, quarter specials, pickpocket, pick dodger, chase the artist, clamps, hard crusher, interceptor, intimidator. What more do you need? He also comes with hot zone hunter, which is a W as well. But I'm telling you guys right now, as far as 3 and D players are concerned, there's better ones in the game. But not for 1,000 MT, which is why I'm super, super high on Lou Dort. And if you're really balling on a budget, he is an absolutely incredible budget pickup for your squad. Now, this one was a little bit tough for me because you got Pascal Siakam, you got Jonathan Isaac, and then you got Xavier McDaniel. Now, the one thing I will say about Xavier McDaniel is he's a he's the cheapest out of them all, right? 3300 I don't even think you can get Siakam for that price. So he's a little bit cheaper than than everybody else that we have seen. But he gives he gives you a little bit of something different. And I'm going to explain why. 6'9, 215 pounds, 82 three ball, 95 driving dunk. Now the big thing about X-Man is the fact that he's gonna attack the rim better than Jonathan Isaac and Pascal Siakam. Does come with the 86 ball handle. And on the defensive end, he's just that little bit better. 90 speed 92 lateral quickness so in my opinion he's pretty similar to jonathan isaac besides the fact that jonathan isaac is just a little bit lengthier but everything else give me xavier mcdaniel tendency wise 100 driving dunk tendency hopping on down to the defensive tendencies which are absolutely ridiculous as well hall of fame heart crusher then you look at the defensive badges pickpocket pick dodger chase the artist clamps intimidator some incredible defensive badges again i think he's one step above jonathan isaac you could go back and forth with him and siakam i just think xavier Xavier is so good defensively, it's hard to even take Spicy P over him. That is why I have Xavier McDaniel at number five on my top 10 budget player list. Coming in at number four for me is a guy that, look, he doesn't get enough recognition. He doesn't. In past 2Ks, he was always hyped up. But for some reason this year, when we got a card going for less than 4,000 MT at this elite level, he just doesn't get the recognition he deserves. 
Gerald Wallace, 6'7", shooting guard, 220 pounds. Part of the reason I like him is because of his player model. 83 three ball with a butter release, 90 driving dunk, 86 ball handle, 92 steal, 93 perimeter defense, good rebounder, 90 speed, and 93 lateral quickness. Just a better Lou Dort. Really, that's what he is. He's a lot more complete Lou Dort, a lot lengthier. 95 driving dunk tendency, happen on down to the defensive tendencies, which are pretty good all the way around. Hall of Fame Tyler's defender, gold catch and shoot corner specialist, as well as pickpocket, pick dodger, and clamps, intimidator, heart crusher. Like, he's got what you need, as well as the fact that he does come with quick first step and showtime. On the offensive end, he is very, very solid. I feel like he can be that secondary ball handler on budget type of squads. And on the defensive end, he's 6 7 with elite defensive badges. I'm telling you guys, he doesn't get hyped up or talked about enough, but he's on my no money spent squad and he's probably there to stay for at least the foreseeable future. Now, for me personally, the top three were super, super easy to come up with. Starting at number three, we do get Amethyst CP3. Now, the reason I'm going to say they were easy to come up with is because it's it's not even close. CP3 is so much more complete than a Gerald Wallace type of card. Here we got one for 5,500. Uh, and just look at how complete he is. Now, the one thing I will say is I don't play CP3 currently on my no money spent account. He is the guy I grind triple threat with and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't personally play with the card because there's a guy higher up on my list that I like as well as I do run shot Diamond John Stockton. But look at his CP3, six feet tall, 175 pounds, 93 ball, good ball handle, great defensively, 93 speed, good ball acceleration, as well as that 94 lateral quickness. The only thing you can say about this card are two things. He's short and he can't duck. Outside of those things, what other negative thing can you say about the card? I mean, you just can't. Obviously, he can't dunk. Defensive tendencies are very, very solid. You look at the badges, Hall of Fame, Giant Slayer, Gold, Catch and Shoot, Dimer, Pickpocket, Pick Dodger, Clamps, Interceptor, Heart Crusher, Tylus, Defender, Handles for Days, Bailout, Quick First Step, Stop and Go, Unpluckable, Flexible, Hot Zone Hunter, Green Machine, Range Extender, Volume Shooter. I could go on and on. I do think he's a lot better on next gen compared to current gen when that's kind of where I weighted this, right? My number one, I'm not as high on on next gen compared to CP3, but I weighted more on current gen and that's why my number one will just be that little bit higher. But as far as for under 6,000 MT, you're gonna be very hard pressed to find a better point guard outside of my guy at number one than Amethyst CP3. Coming in at number two for me is still one of the most overlooked budget players in the game. And I tried putting everybody on him a long time ago, said to invest in him because his price was going to go up. His price did raise at one point to like 9,000 MT. And now it's back below 3,000, which is just kind of wild to me. Sean Kemp, 6'10", 230 pounds, 83 ball. Now, the thing I'll say about that 83 ball, it's not necessarily that you're going to knock down consistent enough shots, but people are going to have to respect that. 96 driving dunk, 83 ball handle, 84 interior, decent enough rebounder, 84 speed, and a 73 lateral quickness. Now, I don't like comparing people to Blake Griffin, but that's what Sean Kemp is. He's a mini Blake Griffin. And when I say mini, no, I mean mini, mini Blake Griffin. He's not Blake Griffin. But he's just that mini type of version of him. Like if you want, if you want to know what kind of Blake Griffin reminds me of, it's Sean Kemp. Hall of Fame Showtime. You look at the gold defensive badges, it's enough. Comes with gold quick first step as well. I'm telling you, he can make plays for others, make plays for himself, and activate team takeover pretty quickly with that Hall of Fame Showtime. I personally don't mind his release either. I can green maybe one out of every three shots from the above the break, which isn't bad at all for an amethyst Sean Kemp for 2700 Coming in at number one for me, by far and away, is Ruby Tony Rowan. I don't even think it's close. Like, I think it's Tony Rowan and then the rest. Like, that's kind of where I stand on Tony Rowan. Sean Kemp can maybe be close. But you're looking at a guy here in Tony Rowan for 1,300 MT. In current gen specifically, he's 6'6", 205 pounds. Player model's good. 79 three ball. But remember, he has the Treyberg base, which is decent enough. And from midi with his hot spots, it's easy to green. 90 driving dunk with Showtime dunks with gold Showtime. 90 ball handle. Defensively, 88 steal, 86 perimeter defense. 92 speed, speed ball acceleration. As well as that 86 lateral quickness. Hopping on to the tendencies, 95 driving dunk tendency. Looking at the, the on-ball steal tendency, which is a 90, 80 contest shot tendency as well. Tendencies are just ridiculous. Then you go to the badges. Gold catch and shoot, difficult shots, diver, pickpocket, big dodger, clamps, off-ball pest. Doesn't have intimidator, which is a bad out badge. I wish he definitely did have, but he does come with showtime. Handles for days, quick first step, space crater, unpluckable, which is a very, very underrated and overlooked badge. 
Also comes with Hot Zone Hunter, Hot Start, Tyler Shooter, and Volume Shooter. So when you look at everything, as far as their prices, as far as just a complete player, give me Tony Rowan at the top of my list 10 times out of 10 as the best budget player in NBA 2K21. But that is going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Leave your comments down below because I'm sure I missed out on one or maybe more players. Who did I leave off the list that you guys think should have been deserving? Try to keep my list for players under like 10, 10-ish K. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys and have a blessed day.